Alabama first fall scrimmages in the books today. And what we have heard out of fall camp today, what we have been reading, all good stuff, all good stuff. And I am excited to see how far this team goes this season. I am I am excited to see because I've been hearing a lot of good things today. You know, a lot of people have been getting a lot of work in, Jalen Miro in person and everything. So, guys, before we get into the video, we will talk about it, but welcome to Nick Seven Junior Sports Talk TV. Thank God for tuning in. Please like, come subscribe to the channel. Please like, come subscribe to subscribe to the channel. Please share it with anybody who you know may be may be interested. But guys, I will say I'm excited about Alabama football. What are we like? Twenty days away, twenty one days away, something like that. It's close, guys. It's close, and it's here. And the things that we are hearing, man, it's gonna be an exciting season. I think, like I say, I think it's gonna be one of them seasons that, if you're not a Bama fan, you're gonna be pissed off. That's all I gotta say. But guys, let's get into these notes. And just to let y'all know, I'm about to uh, do a video. I'm basically gonna post my top 30 players, my top 30 players that are important to Alabama this season from 1 to 30. And let me know if y'all would like to see that. I'm doing the list right now. But let me know if y'all would like to see that. But let's get into this list. Jalen Miro made many top-tier throws today per killing the board. And if you're a Bama fan, you really love to hear this. If you're a fan of Jalen Miro, you'll love to hear this. He also made, you know, you heard maybe, by Ryan Williams, he made a uh, pass Ryan Williams, Jan Miller, and he also ran one in for a touchdown today. So, Jalen Miro was doing it all today. He looks to have impressed. He looks to have improved big time today. Uh, I've been hearing, too, actually, he's been connecting on the short intermediate routes a lot more, so he has gotten better in that. That's what I've been hearing. And moving forward, hey, this is what we want to continue to hear from my guy, Jalen Miro. And also, Cole Adams was caught, or was seen working with the second team today. He also caught a touchdown from Ty Simpson. And um, the tight end as well, I think the tight end as well also caught, uh, I forgot my, my uh, John Chavis, whatever his name is, got a transfer in from Washington, I want to say. I think he caught a touchdown pass from Ty Simpson too. So, y'all let me know in the comments. If Jalen Miro were to go down, are y'all confident enough with Ty Simpson coming in, taking the spot, and still leading Alabama to a college football playoffs and possibly a national championship run? Knock on wood for the Jalen Miro thing, but me personally, I am confident right now in Ty Simpson. If he were to have to come in and take over the ranks, and be the QB1 for Alabama if something were to happen. Let me know in the comments of what y'all think. Are y'all confident in Ty Simpson? If he had to come in and take over the ranks as QB1 or not? Let me know in the comments how you feel about that. So number two, Ryan Williams is at to advertise. He hauled in a 50-yard touchdown pass from uh, Dallas Miro today. Guys, we talking about a guy that should be Preparing for his uh, his uh, senior season in high school, but he is on the campus of Tuscaloosa. Preparing for his true freshman season, he should be a 12th grader, but he's out there performing like he's a sophomore going into his junior year. This dude, what we're hearing about him, he sounds like he he has a down pack. And just remember, remember, guys, he just came in this summer. He hasn't been on campus long at all. He's just getting there. And he is as an advertiser, they're saying. So let's uh go to number three. Caleb Odom continues to impress and by far had the play of the day with an acrobatic catch alongside the sideline. They say that catch was freaking amazing. Um uh, Caleb Odoms is somebody that we don't really see on the interviews. They don't, we haven't been hearing really much about him. But the players talk highly of him. Think about Jalen Miro, Ryan Williams, two true freshmen. 
we possibly have two guys on this roster roster that can win them Blitnikoff when they get up in their sophomore junior season. Like two guys on this roster that can possibly leave Alabama with the Blitnikoff award. That's crazy to have. We are getting back to those John Mechie days, those Jerry Judy days, those Jamison Williams days, those Devontae Smith days, those Henry Ruggs days, those Waddle days. It feels like we're getting back there to the wide receiver room because when you think about it, think about the guys like Rico Scott, Bubba Hampton. Think about Jalen Hill when he gets when he gets more healthy. This wide receiver room that we have is stacked. It's stacked. Like, man, I know I miss some guy, Cole Adams. Uh, my guy that played baseball from Tennessee. I can't uh I can't even think of his name right now because I want to think of it, but. This wide receiver room that we have is stacked. And think about the guys that's coming in the 2025 class. Caleb Odom. Guys like that, Lazier Brooks. Like, this wide receiver room is going to be stacking. This is the type of product that Jamar Shepard, Nick Sheridan, and Coach Kelly and the board will bring to this offense. It's going to be exciting to watch Alabama football for years to come, man. It's going to be exciting to watch Alabama football. But the next guy, next th this thing on the list, the kicking game was strong, and Nicholson went three for five with multiple kicks from out of four to five plus. Now, when I seen this, I've been I was reading mixed thoughts on this. Some say it wasn't that good. Some say it's strong. Some say I I, I, I put it it was the average day, but you got to take into account. Three for five, what keeps 45 yards and plus? To me, I ain't gonna lie, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's a pretty good solid day. And with Graham Nixon winning the best uh, kicker award last year, I will understand why people feel the way they feel. Kind of expect more, but you no, know, this is practice, this is a scrimmage game. So hey, what do you do? You make your mistakes in practice so you get better for for game time situation. So me, I think it was. And a pretty good average day. Pretty good average day. So next on this, there were very few penalties today and no false starts. Love to see the team being disciplined. Really like this because if we know our offensive line, like discipline problems the last couple of years. And for us, like penalty-wise, oh, man, we've been killing it penalty-wise. But for to hear – very little penalties and no false starts. There's that we're trending up. These guys are trending up. Coach Cap, shout out to you, man. Shout out to you. But yes, I love to hear that about the offensive line. What what they have a new name now called the Juice Squad. And yes, them boys are juicy. Them boys are juicy. So let's get it. Number six, the offense ran 102 plays today. That is a great sign of things to come for uh for this offense. We will see. We will be fast paced this season. We'll see an Alabama team being fast paced. 102 plays in the first scrimmage. We getting that in practice. That is a sign that we're gonna we're gonna be moving the ball. We're gonna we we're finna run it. We finna run like we're finna run. We're finna run them up. So when you hear players like Jeremy Bernard talking about. This offense has the put potential to put up 40 plus, 40 plus points a game. When I hear you in the scrimmage and you're running in 102 plays, I feel like this is a sign. This is a sign it ain't in the right direction. But that's good stuff. Uh the young guys in the secondary played well today and made several good plays. Very promising group. We all know we're going to have guys, young guys in the secondary. They're going to have to step up. And I'm telling you, I think we have guys, young guys, that will step up. People like Xavier Brown, Xavier Botway, Xavier Mincy. I think Xavier Mincy is going to be an NFL guy with his size, with his attributes, his talent, his skills. I think this guy is going to be an NFL guy. Along with other guys, think about Ray Morgan had to step up play. What is it, the Husky spot? Who got slot? Ray Morgan, man, that's that's a dog. So we got a lot of young beasts 
is going to have to step up and play a real important role in this defense. Now, I'm going to talk about the defense as well more. Defensive line. With this defensive line group, I think we're going to hear a lot of names because my thing always is with this 425, for it to really, really work on the back end, your front seven is going to have to be strong. And we have a deep, deep, deep defensive line group. We have several of top 90 players in the country that are that is on his on his team, on his defensive line. And with heavy rotation, meaningful playing time, getting the quality reps needed, rotation, meaningful playing time, quality reps is going to get us through the season. That is my opinion. That is my personal opinion. I think that is what gets us through the season on the defensive side to have a great back end that we want to. We, this front seven, this defense is going to have to put it together. So the O-line looked good and played very consistent. Proctor was back running with the ones today. With that being said, Proctor was back running with the ones, but say Eli Elijah Pritchard had a good day. Say Wiggum Farby had a good day at Taco. So uh, I'm telling you, my prediction is Caden Proctor is definitely going to have the uh, tackle position on the left side, but I think it's going to be a battle to the end for the right tackle position. I think it's going to be a battle to the end for the right tackle position. John Miller and Justice Hayes will headline one of the best running back duels in America this fall. Uh, every time the adult, the both of them are on the Dope Walker Award watch list. So that tells you a lot right there. I've been talking highly about those guys. I think these guys are going to be the best running back duo in the country. Think about it. This man had a thousand yard rusher last year from a transfer from Mississippi State. Now he got two guys that really can get the job done. Two guys that Jan Miller is a beast out of the kitchen, out of the backfield, and he's a beast with a ball in his hand. Justice Hayes is just a straight up freak of nature athlete that been putting in work since his true freshman season and this year is going to be his year he's going to break out and that's going to bring us the best running back duo in the country but overall great first scrimmage and a lot of positive still have a few things to correct excited about what's next for the roll tide all right guys and that's it right there like i said a few things work out uh, like what this team is headed, like the things I'm hearing, like the positive coming out of camp, like everything that I'm hearing. We are heading in the right direction for a very successful season. First year of all, I'm Coach Cullen the board. But let me know y'all comments. Let me know in the comments on how y'all feel about this. What are your thoughts? And like I said, tomorrow I will be dropping my top 30 list of the Alabama players, my top 30 players, and I'm dropping them. From 1 to 30, you know what I'm saying, in the importance of how I feel they're important to the team this year. Let me know if y'all want to see that. But thank y'all. Like my guy, Roll Tide Willie. Blitz by my blitz. And I don't give a piss about nothing by the time. And like my motto is, if you're not a Bama fan, you're about to be pissed off, baby. Roll Tide. Thank y'all for tuning in. Peace.